Hello viewers, today we are going to make a cream soup. Now all cream soups are made with the same uh, procedure. The general method of making a cream soup is the same, wherein you first have to make a puree of the main vegetable or the main ingredient. For example, if you are making a cream of pea soup, you have to make a puree of uh, peas. If you are making a cream of cauliflower soup, you have to make a puree of cauliflower. And then you add bechamel sauce to it and cream to it and finally the garnish. Now today we'll make a cream of tomato soup. Now to make a cream of tomato soup you require butter, oil, you require a mirepoix, onions, carrots, turnips, celery, parsley stems, some crushed garlic, you require some chopped tomatoes, red ripe tomatoes, you require bay leaf, peppercorns, seasoning, salt and pepper, bechamel sauce and cream. Now let's start making the soup. To begin with, we take a pot, add butter to it and together with butter we add a little oil also. When the butter is melted, we'll add the onions, the carrots, the turnips, and we'll saute these over medium heat. We'll add a bay leaf and few peppercorns also. Now when uh, the onions are slightly transparent, translucent, we'll add the celery and the leeks and some crushed garlic. We have to cook this mirepoix till it's slightly brown, lightly brown. Now you can see this mirepoix has browned nicely. It's not too brown. Now what we'll do is we'll add the tomatoes, the chopped tomatoes. We'll give it a nice stir. And we'll add some salt. The salt will help in taking out the moisture from the tomatoes and make them soft. At this stage, We'll also cover the lid, we'll reduce the heat slightly and allow the tomatoes to cook. At this point, we'll also add some seasoning to the sauce, salt and white pepper. Once we take bread, preferably one day old bread, because if it is fresh, it will be very difficult to cut it. We cut off the sides. And we cut it into one centimeter long strips. and then turn them around 90 degrees and cut them into one centimeter cubes. Now these will just shall fry in butter. 
take a pan add some butter to it the butter melts we'll add the bread croutons and we'll just turn them around to ensure that they brown evenly the bread will soak up all the butter we can also toast the bread in the oven and sometimes we may even fry it in hot oil they should be evenly colored light brown from all the sides once the bread browns it will leave the extra butter that it has soaked up now these croutons have turned nice brown we'll take off the heat and cool them and use them for the garnish of the soup the tomatoes are softening up releasing the moisture but they are not completely softened up yet we'll continue to cook them make sure that you put a lid on and take care that they should not stick at the bottom now after about 10 to 12 minutes of cooking the tomatoes have completely softened up the juices have been released now what we'll do is we'll add water to it you can also add chicken stock to it in case you are making soup for non vegetarians but if it's to be made for a known guest you can add some water so that both vegetarians and non vegetarians can have the soup now you increase the heat bring this to a boil and then we'll simmer it for about 20 to 25 minutes we'll also add some white pepper powder to it now the soup has been simmering for the last 20 to 25 minutes tomatoes have all mashed up what we'll do is we'll put off the flame we'll let it cool slightly and then we'll blend it using a hand blender now before blending the soup we'll remove the bay leaves and using a hand blender we'll blend the soup The tomatoes have blended well. We have very smooth puree. Now what we'll do is we'll strain this through a strainer. Now we have strained the puree, tomato puree, and after straining we'll put it back into the patilla. and we'll bring it to a boil again now this puree has come to a boil again what we'll do is we'll uh, take it off the heat now we'll take it off the heat and we'll add the bechamel sauce to it now when we're doing this we have to be careful that one of the two should be hot and the other should be cold if they are both hot or if they are both cold the milk and the bechamel will curdle because of the acid in the tomatoes so we'll we have the cold bechamel sauce we'll add the bechamel and we'll stir it in this will thicken the soup and give it a little body and we'll add the bechamel sauce to it now when we add bechamel sauce to the puree 
we should ensure that both are at the same temperature. Because if they're not at the same temperature, the milk in the bechamel will curdle because of the acid that is present in the tomatoes. Now the soup has come to a boil again. At this point, we'll taste it for seasoning and acidity. And if it's slightly too acidic, we'll add a teaspoon and a half of sugar to it. Just to reduce that acidity of the tomatoes. Now the final step is to add cream to it. Now we don't add cream directly to the hot soup. What we do is we take a little cream in a cup. We add equal amount of hot soup to it. We mix it in. And then slowly drop it back into the hot soup, stirring all the time. This is called tempering. We temper the cream into hot liquids. We don't add it directly to prevent the cream from curdling. Now we'll finally taste the soup for seasoning. Needs a little salt. And we'll put it in a soup bowl. Garnish it with croutons and a little cream on top. Yummy tomato soup is ready. I'm sure now you'll be able to make cream of tomato soup. As I told you in the beginning, all cream soups are made using the same procedure where you make a puree first and then add bechamel sauce and cream to it. Thank you for watching the video.